shall we rise up to pray. I want you to commit yourself to the Lord that today the word of God will be very clear to you. And that you'll apply your heart to wisdom. That the word of God will not fall on stony ground on the side of the road on sunny kind of ground. It will fall in good ground. The good ground of your heart. Bringing forth fruit. Thirty fold. Sixty fold. And a hundred fold. Open your mouth and pray. That even though you have heard a little before. Or maybe you've had much. That today once again. The word of God will be so made clear and plain to you. And that your heart will digest the word, meditate on the word. And then you become fruitful. As you faithfully keep to this sin, the Lord is teaching us, warning us, be not anxious. And let the word of the Lord take no thought. Don't be worried, don't be anxious. Let that word turn you around. Turn your life around and say, Lord, I get the message now. Take no thought. And then your life will be richer, better, higher, greater, more fulfilling, happier. When there's nothing to worry about in your life. Pray that the very word. The very statement, the very sentence the Lord has for you will not pass you by, will reach you. And then God will give you the wisdom to apply this word in your personal life, in your family life, in your professional life. Everywhere you go, every little thing that happens, every big thing that happens, that the Lord will help you to remember the word that he has been teaching us all these weeks so that your mind will rest then you relax then you live a happy life healthy life a holy life a righteous life a life without worry without anxiety pray that the word will be made profitable to you today all scripture is given by inspiration of god and it is profitable profitable for doctrine for improve for correction for instruction in righteousness that you, the child of God, will be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Pray that the Lord will also enrich your life through the study we have today. And if today is your first time of coming, pray that the Lord will give you understanding, the spirit of understanding. So this word will mean quite a lot. Your life from today and henceforth. Pray it will not just be your head. This word will be transferred from your head to your heart. The word will be like water. That washes and cleanses you. Washes away. All the stains of tradition. Cleanses away. All the rots. Within the mind and within the brain. Pray that the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Our Savior, Lord, Master and Teacher. Will make the word clear in its meaning, its application to your life. In Jesus' name, we pray. Yeah. And amen, as if you are still awake. Yeah. Amen. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you, Lord, for the teaching of your word and this word of God that is light in a pathway. We're asking, O oh Lord, that you open up things that are riddles in our lives, even tonight for us in Jesus' name. And we're praying, O oh Lord, that this word will direct us in the path we ought to go, in the way we ought to walk in Jesus' name. 
and everything we hear lord we pray your spirit will energize us empower us enlighten us so that we'll be able to do according to your word and our lives will be without worry without anxiety without fear without frustration in jesus name we thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray Amen. Thank you very much. You can see now what a joy to be in the presence of God once again tonight. Every time we have Bible study like this, and I'm always looking forward so that the Lord Himself will reveal the reaching word through the living word, and then it becomes the energizing word in your life. We're still in Matthew chapter 6, and we're looking at Matthew chapter 6 from verse 25. Matthew chapter 6 verse 25 Therefore I say unto you Take no thought for your life What ye shall eat Or what ye shall drink Nor yet for your body What ye shall put on Is not the life more than meat And the body more than raiment Behold the fowls of the air for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they, which of you, by taking thought, by being anxious or worried, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed, not dressed, not adorned like one of these. Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, ye of little faith? But start your one, therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewith that shall we be closed? Fall, fall, for after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that she have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself sufficient unto the days the evil thereof. Those ten verses were the, are the verses of Jesus Christ taught the people in his own day and these are the 10 verses the lord is teaching us in this series of studies telling us we can be free we must be free and we're going to be free from worry and anxiety and today we're looking at one of the major reasons why a child of the heavenly father a child of god should not have any stain or spot of worry anxiety in his life that your mind your heart should be so free set free by the lord that there is no worry there's no anxiety and that reason is the faithfulness of god god's faithfulness that releases us from worry and anxiety and you underline that in your own heart in your own life the faithfulness of god God's faithfulness releases us from worry and from anxiety. Look at verse 30 again. In verse 30 it says, Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? Worry locks us up in a dark room of unbelief. But faith opens the windows to let in the light of positive thinking and logical reasoning. If you have anxiety, anxiety will cast a shadow of frustration and despair upon you and keep you from meditating upon the provision and the promise of our freedom. Many people, even Christians, dear Christians, beloved children of God, they are prevented from enjoying a fuller life, a happier life, because they are imprisoned by worry and anxiety. And they are in the prison, and then they, they lock it up with unbelief. Because of the worry and the anxiety, their renewed mind breeds worry and anxiety. 
The unrenewed mind walks by sight in this world of uncertainty. The truths taught by Jesus Christ, this truths applied by the Holy Ghost sets us free. Even when we know the truth in our head, sometimes unbelief and worry can keep us from experiencing the joy and the liberty of what we know, the liberty of the children of God. That's why the Lord is saying, see, look, behold, consider, learn, meditate. Apply the word you hear to your life And then worry and anxiety will vanish away And you know what the Lord said If you look at Matthew chapter 6 You'll see that word behold And you'll see that word consider Look at verse 26 Behold the fowls of the air When it says behold It says I want you to stop And stop all activities And just look and behold the fowls of the air. And see how they fly about and how they go about. No worry and no anxiety. Behold, look, see, and learn. You see, it's another word. That's the word consider. If you look at verse 28. And why take his thought for image? Consider. That word consider means meditate. Think through. Put some logic into your thinking and look at these lilies, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not a rage, was not a dunge, like any one of these. The word consider. And that's what the Lord is telling us in these passages. He said, hey, we're only worried and anxious because we fail to think. We fail to meditate. And we fail to apply. And we fail to learn. We fail to consider. Look at Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 39. The word consider. Deuteronomy chapter 4. We're looking at verse 39. In verse 39, know therefore this day and consider it in thine heart. Brothers and sisters, all these things we're learning. If you do not consider them in your heart, you'll still be worried and anxious. But it's when you look at, look at the birds, consider, consider it in your heart. These birds, no worry, no anxiety. Look at the lilies, behold and consider and learn and meditate and think it through in your heart. Consider in your heart, Job chapter 37. In Job chapter 37, it's still calling upon us. It says, don't allow these lessons, practical lessons of nature. As you move around, don't allow them to just pass by you, wait, stop, stop all activities and consider everything that you see. Job 37 verse 14, hacking unto this, stand still, consider the wondrous works of God. Hacking unto this, look at this, listen to this one, stand still. Consider the wondrous works of God, the lilies, the flowers, the grass, the ravens, the birds, the fowls of the air. Consider them. These are the wondrous works of God. In Psalm 64, I'm reading from verse 9, verse 10. Psalm 64, I'm reading from verse 9. And all men shall fear and shall declare the work of God, for they shall wisely consider of his doings. A major problem is that we're too much in a hurry. I mean, hurrying through life. And we see many things we don't consider. We don't think through and we don't see God who kept me yesterday is still alive. The God who kept me, you know the other time you were sick and it appeared you were going to die and here you are, you are still alive. And the things you feared very much at that time that you thought will come upon, didn't come. And you know that's why you should wait and consider. Look at the things you have gone through already and the major the problem you have today is so small, so minor compared with the problems you have gone through in the past. And the God of yesteryear, so the God of today, and that same God that helped you yesterday, it will help you today. And then in verse 10, the righteous shall be glad in the Lord and shall trust in him, and all the upright in heart shall glory. Uh, they will glory in the Lord. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, I'm reading verses 13 and 14. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Uh, the reason why we need to just wait. 
Just consider and see the things around you. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 13. Consider the work of God. For who can make that straight which he has made crooked? Mm, think about that. It says, consider the work of God. It says when you consider that, that will release you from worry and anxiety. You know what? You have negative and positive in life. You just accept it. That is the way it is. You have day and night. We don't fight. We don't get frustrated because it's getting dark. We just know that's the way God has made the world. There is day. There is night. And you know what we do to get us uh, to get ourselves not worried and anxious because of night? We adjust our lives. We say, it is dark. I will go to sleep. I'm not thinking about the darkness. I just know it is dark. I cannot change the darkness today. I cannot change the night today. Whatever I cannot change in the night of adversity, it's out of my control. I'm not in control of night or day. Go to sleep. You'll not worry. And then when it is day, you cannot make the day longer. It is like that. That's how God has made it. Consider that this one, I can make a profitable use of it. This other one, I cannot change it. It is so. It is so. That is how the Lord has made the world. There is dry season and there is rainy season. And during the dry season, sometimes we sweat a lot. We feel hot and the heat is much. It is useless frustrating myself because of the heat. Therefore, I adjust myself, I adjust my dressing to the heat. I wear something light because it is the time of heat. And when the rainy season has come, that's the way the Lord has made it. It is cold. It is useless to frustrate myself on the cold. I wear something thick. You keep on adjusting, adjusting. It's like, you know, your thermometer or whatever, or thermostat. You know, you put the thermostat there. If the temperature is going low, then the thing gets high. If it's going high, it gets low. Adjusting every time. That's how we live life. We don't try to fight the day and fight the night. We don't try to fight the rainy season and fight the dry season. It is so, it is so. And then in life, in life, you know, you're going on the road. You're not going to get 100% of people in life behaving exactly the way you want. Acting exactly the way you want. That's the way life is. Some people are tall. Some people are short. Some people are nice. Some people are nasty. Some people are good and some people are bad. Don't complain. It is so. That is a fact of life. If you consider, ah, there's rainy season. There's dry season. I don't get frustrated. There is day. There is night. I don't get frustrated. There are good people. There are bad people in, in the world. I don't get frustrated. There is negative. There is positive. I don't get frustrated. There is fire. There is water. I don't get frustrated. That's the way life is. And that's what the Lord is saying. Consider if you consider that these things are so I cannot change the night today. I cannot change fire to water. I cannot change dry season to rainy season. I cannot change bad people in one day to good people. Adjust yourself and relax. There will be no worry. There will be no anxiety. Look at it again. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. And in verse 13, consider the work of God. For who can make the, the straight, who can make that straight which he has made crooked in the day? Of prosperity be joyful in the day of adversity. Just consider that's how to be free from worry and anxiety. Just consider it is that consideration, that meditation that you have no final authority on that thing to change everybody in life, so they will do exactly as you want. No, they will do as they want, and you just adjust yourself and accept what is. And wait until the Lord will change all those things. Then there will be no worry. There will be no anxiety. God also has set the one over against the other. To the end that man shall find nothing after him. That's how it is. Consider, accept it. It's just like that. And we're looking at uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 7. 2 Timothy chapter 2. We're looking at verse 7. 2 Timothy Chapter 2, verse 7. Consider what I say. 
Consider what I say. And you know, the way we're going to benefit in all this study is just to sit back, look at all the things in your life that bring frustration. And then you say, why am I frustrated? I cannot change the thought of that man. I cannot change the action of that woman. I cannot change the landlord in one day. I cannot change the wife of the landlord in one week. I cannot change the children of the landlord just by, you know, getting frustrated. And since I have nothing to do with their behavior, I cannot change what they do overnight. Relax, consider what I say. And then it says, and the Lord give you understanding. I said the Lord will give you understanding in all things. Let's come back now. We're coming back to Matthew chapter 6. Today we're looking at God's faithfulness that releases us from worry and anxiety. And we're dividing the study to three parts. Number one, God's faithfulness outlaws all worry and anxiety. God's faithfulness outlaws all worry and anxiety. Number two, growing faith overcomes all worry and anxiety growing faith your faith will grow your faith so grows to the level that you have nothing to worry in life about growing faith that overcomes all worry and anxiety number three guaranteed freedom your freedom is guaranteed overlooks all worry and uh, anxiety. We'll go to number one. God's faithfulness outlaws all worry and anxiety. God's faithfulness. Let's look at it. Matthew chapter 6. We're looking at verse 30. Matthew chapter 6 verse 30. Wherefore if God so close the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? Notice those words. Much more. Much more. The Lord said, look at this. Now consider. Look at this. Meditate. Look at this. Think logically. Now, if God has done this, shall he not much more close? close you oh ye of little faith Let, let's chase those words and let's look at them in uh, luke chapter 12 much more much more much more luke chapter 12 we're looking at verse 24 in luke chapter 12 verse 24 here is what it says consider the ravens remember again the word consider consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How? What are the next two words? Much more. It says, just sit down and relax. Don't cry. Don't allow tears to come in your eyes. Don't have self pity. And don't act as if the whole world has fallen on your head. Just relax and then look at the ravens and then look at everything around you and consider. And then it says, How much more are ye better than the fowls? Look at verse 28. The words much more. If then got so close, the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he close you, O ye of little faith? You know what the Lord is saying? He's telling us that our little faith is our problem. Once your faith grows, the problems are over. Our Lord uses the words much more to remind us of the certainty of God's faithfulness. Every time he uses those words, he makes a simple and logical comparison. Our Heavenly Father feeds the birds. He has never failed in his responsibility. The least of the birds are faithfully fed. And now we know this as a matter of fact. This also we, we, we should know without a shadow of doubt. He fed those birds. He's feeding those birds. He will feed you. Our Heavenly Father is always faithful. Christ also uses the words much more in comparing the grass of the field with us. And then he says, hey, God, our Creator and Father, close the grass, the lilies, and the flowers. We see the evidence of that everywhere. It's a fact no one can argue against. No one can deny. In fact, it says, Thou openest thine hand and thou renewest the face of the earth. That's Psalm 104, verses 28 and 13. 
Every year we see the renewal of the face of the earth or the beauty of the grass and the lilies and the flowers. What lesson does Christ draw from that? How much more will he close you with your little faith? God's faithfulness to all his children in every generation is guaranteed. I said this treatment to you is guaranteed. He also uses the words much more in the family setting. In the family setting. Look at what that means in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. We're looking at verse 11. If then, if ye then been evil, know how to give good gifts to your children. Well, that's a family situation. And he looks at the father here. The fa and it doesn't matter in what nation you are. Whether you are in China, you are in India, you are in Africa, you are in Asia, anywhere you are, fathers, parents take care of their children. And he says, therefore, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more, those are the words again, always consider those words, much more, if the parents will take care of their children, I'm a child of God, you are a child of God, by faith in Christ, how much more shall your father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask him, he'll take care of you. Much more, much more. I look at this passage in Second Chronicles chapter 25. Second Chronicles chapter 25. In fact, this is showing us that whatever challenges we have, other people have had those challenges. If you think about your life now, a problem strikes um, unexpectedly. And before you scream and before you cry, ask yourself, this world is about 6,000 years old. 6,000 years and billions and billions and billions of people have lived in this world. This problem that has come to me now, am I the first person this problem is coming to in the world since the world began? The answer is no. Other people have had similar problems, greater problems, smaller problems, multiplied, varied problems. And the Lord has seen them through. And since you are not the first one, Having, a, having such a problem. Other people have had whatever problem it is. In the family, in your personal life, in the place of work. Disappointment, frustration, whatever it is that is happening to you now. Other people have had a similar problem before. And the Lord has solved the problem for them. If the Lord has solved it for others, he will solve it for you. All you need to do is just to know this the night of adversity. I don't fight night or darkness. I just go to sleep. And when I wake up in the morning, I look up and the sun has come. The sun was not there last night. It was all night. And all my sweating and all my frustration, all my worry will not bring the sun a minute earlier than the sun will come. And therefore the best I can do, since I know it will be morning. It just takes time. And instead of keeping awake in the night, sun, where are you? Light, where are you? Sunshine, I'm waiting for you. All the screaming will not make the sun to dawn, to come earlier. Therefore, that's why we go to sleep. We just go to sleep. And by the time we're waking up, look up and the sun is there already. Don't fight. Don't get frustrated. Don't get worried. Just go to sleep and then at the time the light ought to come, the light will come. Look at these words much more. In Second Chronicles chapter 25, I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 9. And Amazar said to the man of God, But what shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? And the man of God answered, The Lord is able to give thee, what are the words? much more than this. Let me show you the story. We're reading from verse 1 so you can get, you can understand. Whatever problems you have, other people have had the same problem. Whatever mistake you have made, maybe you've made some mistakes and now the mistake you made has landed you in a great problem. And then you say, this is my fault. I was not wise. I took a wrong step. Don't kill yourself because of that. 
if an egg has fallen to the ground and then the egg is broken, what are you going to do? You're going to knock your head on the wall and kill yourself because of the egg. Look up. There's another poultry thereby. We can get another egg. Don't die because of one egg that fell on the ground. That's what the Lord is telling us. That mistakes have been made. Some problems have arisen. What are we going to do? Worry and get anxious. My worry will not correct the mistake. Look at it now. In uh, this from verse 1. And Masa was 25 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 29 years in, uh, uh, in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Jehoadan of Jerusalem. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect. Now, in verse 3, it came to pass when the kingdom, when the kingdom was established to him, that he slew the servants that had killed the king his father. But he slew not their children. But did as it is written in the law of the book of Moses, where the Lord commanded, listen to this now, saying, The father shall not die for the children, neither shall the children die for the fathers, but every man shall die for his own sin. This man, Amasa, became a king. And then he saw that his servants had killed his father, and he punished them. But he didn't touch the children. And he said, Why don't you just... Clear their children. Knock them all. Kill them. He said, I can't do that. The children are innocent. And then the fathers, their parents did what was wrong. The father will not bear the punishment for the children. Neither will the children bear for the parents. In verse 5, moreover now. This is the real story. Moreover, Amaziah gathered Judah together. And made them captains over thousands. And captains over hundreds, according to the houses of their fathers, throughout all Judah and Benjamin. And he numbered them from 20 years old and above, and found them 300,000 choice men, able to go forth to war that could handle spear and shield. He had a battle to fight, a war had risen up. And therefore, he got through all the people that he was ruling over, and he chose 300,000 choice men, valiant men, mighty warriors. But then he saw that they will not be enough. That's what, now we come to verse 6. He hired also 100,000 mighty men of valor out of Israel for 100 talents of silver. 100,000 men, men of valor, great warriors. He chose them because he wanted them to go to war and fight against his enemies. But there came a man of God to him saying, O king, let not the army of Israel go with thee. For the Lord is not with Israel to wit with all the house of Ephraim. But if thou wilt go, do it. Be strong for the battle. God shall make thee fall before the enemy. For God has power to help and to cast down. And Amaziah said unto the man of God, You came late. You should have come earlier. Before I paid them such a large amount of money. Already had hired them. Already I've selected them. I've even counted them. 100,000 men of valor. And then he said, But what shall we do? For the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel. I've made the mistake already. You didn't come in time to show me. That's why we get worried. We get worried because, you know, we made that mistake. We won't put money on that mistake. And now the Lord is telling us, turn it around. That thing will not work. And then we get anxious. Don't get anxious. Remember the words, much more. Everybody say, much more. Your life will be beautiful. Yeah. Whatever happened yesterday, yesterday is gone. Whatever happened last week, last week is gone. Whatever happened last month, last year, last year is gone. I made a mistake. I made a fool of myself. And so what? Are you going to die because of that? Who has never made a mistake in life? Anybody who has never made a mistake will never make any other sin. You, you know, children, children grow up and while they are walking, they fall down, they pick themselves up again. What if when that child was learning to walk, she, that child fell down, then the child remained there. I made a mistake. I fell down. Get up. 
things are going to be much better. Because you see, it is through learning, falling, rising, and then trying this, and then we don't know, we don't have all the wisdom, and then we make all those mistakes, and then we get up and dust ourselves and keep on moving. That's how we're going to make it in life. We'll make it in life in Jesus' name. You know, the difference between those who succeed and those who fail, this is the difference. Those who succeed, they failed before, they made a wrong step before, they made a mistake before, but they succeeded because they got up. The people who fail, they make the same mistake as the people that succeed, but after that mistake, they lie down there. Just lie down there. But get up. Those of us, you see that, you know, we're moving on. We fell down before. I don't mean falling into sin, but, you know, fell into trouble, got into trouble. What we said, what he did, got us into trouble. But we said, I'm not going to die because of that, because I said that thing wrong. And because I did that thing, I'll get up. And now we're up and we're moving. Come on, get up and join us. We will succeed together. And so, and Messiah said, I've made the mistake already. How about the money I paid them? What shall we do for the hundred talents which I have given to the army of Israel? The man of God answered and answered to him and said, The Lord is able to give thee much more than this. I come to tell you tonight, whatever you have lost by the mistake you made, the Lord will give you much more. In verse 10, then Amazar separated them to which the army that was come to him out of Ephraim to go home again. And some people don't like to correct their mistakes. They just, they just keep on in that mistake and they are worried and anxious. What will they say of me if I correct that mistake? What will they think of me if I say, men, gentle men of Ephraim, I made a mistake in hiring you. Now go back home. What will they think of me? What will they say of me? We're so much afraid of gossip, of what the people will say. And then we, we fail to correct what is wrong and then we miss the much more. And then you know instead of much more, you have much less, much less. But you know from tonight, the two words in your life, much more. Tell me again, much we go to point number two in point number two we're looking at growing faith growing faith that overcomes all worry and anxiety growing faith that overcomes all worry and anxiety we're looking at matthew chapter 6 and verse 30 matthew chapter 6 we're looking at verse 30 wherefore if god so close the grass of the field which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven. Shall he not much more close you? O ye of little faith. O ye of little faith. Accounts for the reason. For our needless worry. Faith is the key. That opens the door. To a life of joy. A life of fullness. A life of fulfillment. O ye of little faith. Is the reason. For our needless Fears, fears. I, I need to talk about that because common experience to many people. Fear. What is fear? And look at Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 51. In Isaiah chapter 51, I'm reading to you from verse 12. Isaiah chapter 51. And we're looking at verse 12. Isaiah chapter 51. Looking at verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforts you. God will comfort you. Who art thou that thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die? And of the son of man which may be, which shall be as grass. Grass that is there today and tomorrow is no more to be seen. Why are you afraid of them? You know what fear is? Fear is forgetting expressly affirmed revelation. Forgetting for F expressly that's e affirmed that's a revelation that's our fear forgetting expressly affirmed revelation look at all the revelation that god gave unto abraham if you always remember those revelations there'll be no fear in your life abraham look at all the all the things i got to jacob I will be with you. In the place you are going, you will come back again because the blessing of Abraham and Isaac, they are upon you. You know, 
Jacob, if you always remember those expressly affirmed revelations, you'll never be afraid. But it is when we forget, when we forget expressly affirmed revelations, that's when we become afraid. And when we're afraid, then we become frustrated, and then we begin to worry and we get anxious. I will never leave you, I will never forsake you. It is when we forget that expressly affirmed revelation, that's when we become afraid, and we till the end of the world. And then he says, and no man shall be able to overcome you or destroy you or will be able to hinder you in all the things submit for you. It is when we forget that, then we become afraid. A fear means forgetting expressly affirmed revelation. I want you to look at Nehemiah. Nehemiah chapter 4, we're looking at verse 14. Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 14 It says And I looked and rose up And said unto the nobles And to the rulers And to the rest of the people Be not afraid of them Remember the Lord That's all you need to do If you remember the Lord You'll not be afraid The night has come Remember the Lord the Egyptians are coming. Remember the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar is heating his fire seven times over. Remember the Lord. And the Pharisees said, They are coming at you. They are coming for you. Remember the Lord. The landlord is threatening. He's going to pack my loads out before I come back from the fellowship. Remember the Lord. And then there is, What am I going to eat tomorrow? What am I going to eat at this? Way? Remember the Lord. That's how to be free from worry and anxiety. When you just remember the Lord. That's the secret in that verse 14. Be ye not afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible. And fight for your brethren, your sons, and your daughters, and your wives, and your houses. Now, if you think about a fear, uh, uh, it's there on your outline number one. False experiences appearing real. False experiences appearing real. They're not real. But they appear to be real. And because of that, people get afraid. When you analyze the things you are afraid of. In fact, sometimes today now, if you will just sit back and then think about something that happened last year. And then you were so much afraid of that, you almost jumped into the river. When you think about it now that you know the whole detail, you laugh at yourself. How could I be afraid of that? There was nothing in that scene. Look at what I'm saying. Second Kings chapter 7. In Second Kings chapter 7, we're looking at a verse, we're looking at it from verse 5. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. Behold, there was no man there. To start with, these were the four lepers. They said, why are we sitting down there? If we stay here, we, we die of hunger. If we go to the Syrians, those people are kind of, uh, they're terrible people. They, they're warriors. They may kill us. Well, if they kill us, dying, we shall die. Not knowing that those people already, they have even run away. They were not even there. And here we are sitting down. We're imagining they will kill us. We're imagining they will hurt us. We're imagining those people are going to catch us. They are waiting for us. And the moment we appear like this, they just shoot us and we're gone. And the people were afraid about they themselves were afraid and they have run away. Many things we're afraid about never happen. They don't exist. It only exists in your mind, in your brain, in your imagination. And once you correct the thought and the imagination you have, everything is gone. Look at verse 6. For the Lord had made the host of Syrians to hear a noise of chariots. Made them to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses and the noise of a great host. And they said unto one another, Lo, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. And there was nothing like that. You know, the, the Israelites themselves, they were afraid. In fact, when they told the king that there is food in the camp of the Israelites, he said, let me tell you what the Syrians have done. They know that we're hungry and therefore they have gone into a place they hiding so that if we come out looking for food then they will catch us and capture us imagination on every side the lepers had their imagination made them afraid the syrians had their imaginations made them afraid to run away and the king of israel had his own imagination made him to stay and be besieged in hunger come out there is no fear i said there is no fear 
the world the earth is the lord's and the fullness thereof this is my father's territory and we, you, know, you are bottled in there and you are locked in there you are afraid you are afraid to come out and yet this is your father's house the whole world anywhere you go in the world the lord will protect you but because of that imagination and because of that wrong thought, we just lock ourselves in and we're afraid to come out. We're afraid to look eyeball to eyeball, face to face with human beings like ourselves. They will do nothing. Already the Lord has saved you, you were reign in life. And then he tells us in that uh, chapter, in that chapter 7, and look at it in verse, in verse 7. It says, wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and they fled for their lives. There was nothing chasing them but they ran. You see, that is fear. Fear is false experience appearing real. And let me show you another one. In Second Kings chapter 3. Second Kings chapter 3, we're looking at verse 21. Second Kings chapter 3, verse 21. And when all the Moabites heard that the kings were come up, up, they were come up to fight against them. They gathered all that were able to put on armor and upward and stood in the border. And then it says, And they rose up early in the morning, and the sun shone upon the water. And the Moabites saw the water on the other side as red as blood. What happened there is this. They gathered their army. They had all their weapons of war. And they were ready to fight and to shoot. And they said, let those Israelites come. We're going to take them on all of a sudden. There was a river nearby. And the sun, you know, when the sun rises in the morning, it is not, it's not pure white. It has something like reddish yellow. And that sun then shone on the water. The reflection to them looked like blood. And they saw blood. They say, what? All those people have died. We don't need to fight anymore. What they did then was to put down their armor. And they just wanted to go and inspect those people that had died because of the false imagination. The sun that shone on the water gave them an idea that now there is blood. False experiences appearing real. Many things happen like that in life. A reflection of the sun. A reflection of something that is just normal. And then you have a wrong interpretation. That wrong interpretation will get you worried and anxious. And then we're told in verse 24 and 23. And they said, this is blood. The kings are surely slain. And they have smitten one another. Now therefore Moab go to the spoil. And then he says, and when they came to the camp of Israel, the Israelites rose up and smote the uh, Moabites so that they fled before them. But they went forward, smiting the Moabites, even in their country. Uh, what, what brought their destruction here? The imagination. Imagination. And, and what brings our destruction? What brings our worry and anxiety? Imagination. You see this, you make up your mind. You make up your own conclusion. And then you see that reflection. You make up your own uh, kind of uh, conclusion. And you see that you, and you worry yourself to death. You worry yourself and give yourself hypertension. And there's nothing. In this thing you're talking about in this reflection and the sun the sun has always been rising and the sun has always been shining on the river and when you look at it you always see the reflection why are you worried again there is nothing to worry about you will not worry fear is falsified evidence affecting reasoning falsified ex uh, falsified evidence affecting reasoning once the evidence is falsified and you're not seeing correctly it will affect the way you reason number three is frequent exaggerations altering reality frequent exaggeration 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 that is altering or that is uh, that is altering the reality you know the children of israel and they went to inspect the you know the, the land of canaan and then as they went in there then they saw the Anakims, they saw the Canaanites and they came back they said if you see what we saw you'll never think, you'll never dream of going to the land of Canaan, what did you see? I'm telling you those people they are, the walls of their city, they are high to heaven, my friend that's exaggeration and then there are men there 
giants there. Look at me. I, I was like a grasshopper in the front of his exaggeration. That brought fear to the whole of Israel. They said, what are we going to do? All these Anakims and giants are going to kill us. Fear came into their heart because fear is the frequent exaggeration altering reality. Caleb said, but I was there. Joshua said, but I was there with you. I didn't look like a grasshopper. We can do it. Let us go up at once and we're going to overcome. You will overcome. Yeah. Why are you hurting yourself? Exaggerating a small sin. A little sin. Why are you exaggerating this sin? You're going to hurt yourself. Erase all the exaggerations you have and then move on. You're going to win the day. And then is the feeble enemies arousing restlessness. The feeble emotions that we have. And the feeble enemies, you know, the children of Israel, they were not strong. They were weak at that time. You read the story yourself later. And then the Philistines were fighting against them. They said, okay, we know what we're going to do. They went to take the ark of the Lord. And when they came, they shouted. And these were feeble people. And then the Philistines said, hey, we're done. We're gone. Because of these Philistines. And just because the people shouted. And it, it exaggerates everything. All these problems. Are, what problem do you have? That you say, I can't go out. I can't do do this i can't do that and stop all that you're going to be victorious and then let me just tell you about this you know the story and uh, what is fear fear is fears egyptians approaching ruin f-e-a-r fears egyptians approaching ruin the children of israel that come out already of egypt and then the pharaoh said why did we allow those people to go and so they said oh and they got all their chariots and all their men of war. And they were just galloping and running after the children of Israel. Those people did not know that those fierce Egyptians are approaching their ruin. When the children of Israel looked up, they saw those fierce Egyptians. And then they said, what are we going to do? What are you afraid about? All those people, look at the river, look at them. The river will so swallow them up. And many people don't understand that because they see those fierce Egyptians coming, they say, We are gone, we are destroyed. These people are going to kill us. They will not shoot an arrow against your life, they will not touch your life. All these fierce Egyptians are approaching the ruin. And then God said, Moses, why are you crying unto me? What's that in your hand? It's a rock. Stretch it. And he stretch it. What happened? What happened? The Red Sea divided. And then he said, you can go on now. Then they went. When they got to the other side, the Egyptians, you know, they thought they can make us afraid. They will not make you afraid. You know, the Egyptians, when the Israelites were now on the other side. Remember fear? Fears, Egyptians approaching ruin. Their ruin was in the middle of the sea. And they were looking at them. They keep on approaching. Fears, fierce Egyptians. And they kept on running and running and coming. When they got to the middle, God removed all the wheels of their chariots. And they said, we're in trouble. Our enemies are in trouble. And then God said, Moses, what are you doing with your Stretch it back again. He stretch it back and the sea closed up on them. And then the children were looking at one another. If you were there, you will have had them. What are we afraid about? What are we afraid? Look at them. They are floating. On. That, that's uh, that's uh, Pharaoh's uh, servant. That's uh, Pharaoh's uncle. That's Pharaoh's cousin. They are all floating on the shore. You know, in a few days, you will find them all floating on the shore. There is nothing to worry about. You. Just relax. When you, after the Bible study today, take a good meal, not too heavy, and then go to sleep tomorrow morning. The sunshine will come upon your life. And so we understand that there's nothing to worry about because the Lord himself, he has given us the victory and we're going to enjoy our victories in Jesus' name. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. We're looking at it from verse 35. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35. Cast not away therefore your confidence which has great recompense of reward. Cast not away your confidence. Your confidence in the Lord. Your stability and your steadfastness in the Lord. Don't cast that away and your life will be free in Jesus name. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3. 
2 Thessalonians chapter 1, we're looking at verse 3. We are bound to thank God always for you. Brethren, as it is meet because your faith grows exceedingly. Your faith grows exceedingly. Do you realize your faith is growing already? And because your faith, your faith now today is at a higher level than it was last month. The problems you couldn't overcome last month, today now you can overcome in Jesus' name. Because your faith grows ex exceedingly. In Luke chapter 17 verses 5 and 6. Luke 17 verse 5. And the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Increase our faith. The Lord will increase your faith. And the Lord said, if ye, if ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye might say unto the sick sacrament tree, be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea, and it shall obey you. It shall obey you. You know your circumstances. You know if you never try, how will you know that you can speak the word of authority? Just try. Just try. And you say, what if nothing happens? And then I say, what if something happens? Well, something is going to happen. You should the word of command. Instead of fearing your circumstance. You know, that, that's why the circumstances overcome us. But no more. But you see, we just stand there. And then we see circumstances coming. And the Lord is saying, Hey, the word of authority is your mouth. Speak it out. Overcome that circumstance. The faith is there. If you will say unto that circumstance, unto that situation, unto that mountain, be removed, or unto that tree, dry up, it will be so. And we just, we can't get the words out. From today, you'll get the words out. You know, sometimes, how many times have you had, you know, some people, you have had a dream, and then that, that's a, a, a kind of fellow, a bully, he was coming in the dream. And then you were afraid. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? All of a sudden, you said, in Jesus' name. And then that's a big, every, run away. And then the most into thin air. It's in your mouth, speak that word, and you overcome in Jesus' name. But you know, it's when we when we just sit down there and we close our eyes and bow our head, and then we're thinking, we're imagining, and then the moment you close your eyes, you're looking at that giant that is coming, and because you are closing your eyes in your imagination, the giant is bigger than he really is. Open your eyes and look at them and say, I'm a child of God, I command you have nothing to do in my life. Get out of there, they will obey you. Because you see, nothing will be impossible for those who have faith, and you already have faith, and the Lord will take care of you. In Mark chapter 11, verse 22, Mark 11, looking at verse 22, here it says, Jesus answering says unto them, Have faith in God, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, who is that? Whosoever, I said, who is that? It's you, God bless you. Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he says. Therefore I say unto you, What things soever ye desire, when ye pray, believe that ye receive them, and uh, ye shall have them. Philippians chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 6. Philippians chapter 4. We're looking at verse 6. Philippians chapter 4. Reading from verse 6. From today, no worry, no anxiety. We're totally free. We have a commerce from today. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Be careful for nothing. Be worried for nothing. Be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Jesus, through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, remember that, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things of good report. 
If there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Have you seen that? Whatsoever things are true, think on these things. The Egyptians shall come in. The Egyptians are going to destroy us. Is that true? Don't think about that. Now we see the reflection of the sun on the river. And then it's like blood. And then everybody is dead. Is that true? Don't think about it. The king of Israel has had all the Hittites and all the Hivers and everybody. And none they form a formidable army. They are coming at us. They are going to kill us. Is that true? Don't think about it. Only the things that are true. Whatsoever things are true. Think on these things. Don't allow your imagination to magnify the problem. And then to give you heart problem at failure. And give you hypertension. Because of you know your own imagination. Whatsoever things are true. Think on these things. Now verse 13. I can do all things. Read it out aloud with me. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now verse 19, read it aloud. But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Anything to worry about? There's nothing to worry about. Point number three now. Guaranteed freedom overlooks all worry and anxiety. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 13. Matthew chapter 6, we're looking at verse 30. Wherefore, if God so close the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more close you, O ye of little faith? The Lord says he shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Tonight, you have known the truth. You are a child of the king. You will reign in life. The promises of God are yes and amen in your life. An Egyptian will not terminate your life. Incurable disease will not terminate your life. The mountain of success that the Lord set before you are going to climb, you are going to succeed. The Lord will be with you from now on forever. And because you know the truth, the truth sets you free in Jesus' name. The Son shall make you free and you shall be free indeed. The spirit of life in Christ Jesus dwelling in you has set you free. The Lord is saying, stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ has made us free. Glorious freedom, glorious liberty. We're free from sin. Guaranteed freedom and this is freedom from worry and anxiety. Therefore take no thought for your heavenly father knoweth what things ye have need of. My father knows what I need. I said my father knows what I need. If our father knows what we need, why are we worried? He will supply all your needs and all your, all your desires in Jesus' name. We're looking at uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what with that shall we be closed? And then it says in verse 32, For after all these things, the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly father knoweth, your heavenly father knoweth that she have need of all these things. When we're sick, what do we need? Does he know? When we don't have money, what do we need? Does he know? When you are up to the age of marriage, you are not married yet, what do you need? Husband, wife, does he know? After you have married and uh, you know you are waiting and waiting, what are you waiting for? Child, does he know? My heavenly father knows that I have need of all these things. And now you are going for an interview. And your mind is saying, will I pass? Will I succeed or not? What do you need? Success. That appointment. Does he know? Of course he knows. And then when the end is coming, when the month is coming to an end, and the landlord is going to ask for his rent, what do you need? Does he know? My heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things and is going to supply everything in Jesus' name. And so when you know that your heart, you know in your heart that your freedom is guaranteed, the fullness and the provision, everything is guaranteed. There is nothing to worry about in Psalm, in Psalm 112. Psalm 112. Psalm 112. We're reading from verse 6. 
Surely it shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. That will be your experience. Psalm 125. Psalm 125. We're looking at verse 1 to verse 3. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth, even forever. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. What happens to wicked people will not happen to you. And whatever is happening to them, don't say it, it has happened, it, has, it is coming, it, it will never come. The rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous. Let the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Then in Psalm 46, Psalm 46, we're looking at it from verse 5. God is in the midst of her. God is in your family. It's living in your heart. It's among us in our church here. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her and that right early. The Lord will not be late in coming to you. In Psalm 55, Psalm 55, I'm reading from verse 22. 55 verse 22. Cast thy body upon the Lord. He shall sustain thee. I will see you again. Nothing will take your life before we come together again. We shall meet again. Because he say you cast your burden upon the Lord. And he shall sustain thee. He shall never suffer the righteous to be moved. In Psalm 62 verse 1. Truly my soul waiteth upon, the, upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. In verse 5, my soul, wait thou upon God, for my expectation is from him. Where is your expectation? It's from the Lord. Psalm 16, I'm reading verses 8 and 9. Psalm 16, verses 8 and 9. I have set the Lord always before me. Don't set Satan before you, demons before you, difficulties before you. Set the Lord always before you. He'll take care of all the problems. Because he's at my right hand, I shall not be moved. Therefore, my heart is glad and my glory rejoices. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Rest because the Lord is always before you. Psalm 121, Psalm 121, verse 1. I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not suffer my foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth his soul shall not slumber nor sleep. The Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth. And even how long? Anything to worry about? There's nothing to worry about. Rise up and let us pray. You tell the Lord, you know, your freedom is guaranteed. Your freedom is guaranteed. You are a child of God, is caring for you. Is caring for you. You tell the Lord, whatever mistakes you made in the past, just say, Lord, I'm sorry, and that's over. And then the blood of Jesus will cleanse and wash you. And then you are protected and preserved. And now you can rejoice and be happy in the Lord because you know the Lord is watching over you and the Lord is taking care of you. You are a child of God. Praise the Lord. Now you know the truth. And you know there is nothing, there is nothing, there is nothing to worry about. He'll take care of you, he'll protect you, he'll provide for you. Just thank the Lord and say, Lord, now I know the truth. I've been bothering myself by my own imagination. I've been hurting myself by my own imagination. But no more, no more. 
Now I am free. You are free in Jesus name. Talk to the Lord and say Lord thank you for the revelation. Thank you for your word. He keeps his own. He watches over his own. There is no problem today that has not happened to somebody else before. They overcame you will overcome. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Never, never, never be sad or desponding. Since you now have faith to believe. Grace for the duties before you. He will provide. Just as the Lord. Trust him. Rest in him. And sing when the trials are greatest. Trust in the Lord and take heart. Don't fight imaginary enemies. Don't lose your sleep because of all these imaginations. You are precious in the sight of the Lord. He's even giving rain and sunshine to the angels. How much more his own children is providing for even the unbelievers. And is keeping them alive until they hear the word of salvation. How much more you, my brother, my sister, a child of God, he'll take care of you. Just promise the Lord, I'll not doubt you anymore. I will not make myself unnecessarily fearful anymore. Unnecessarily worried anymore. Unnecessarily anxious anymore. I trust in you. You are mine. I'm yours. You'll take care of me. Jesus died because of you. Jesus is on the right hand of the Father praying just because of you. How precious you are. How significant you are. He'll take care of you. In Jesus name we pray. You know there's no problem anymore. I said you know there's no problem anymore. Now there's no worry. Now there's no anxiety. The Lord will take care of you. We'll raise up our hands and then we're going to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day, for the day, for the night, for the rain, for the sunshine, for everything, oh Lord, we praise your name, we glorify you, accept our praises in Jesus' name. For the revelation of your word that melts all our anxiety away, receive our praises in Jesus' name. For your children who are here, my brothers and my sisters, the family of God, all our anxiety is gone. All worry is gone. Lord, we know you are the creator of the heavens and the earth and this world you have created for us. Nobody will make us worried, anxious, afraid, frustrated in this life in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, your protection will be upon your people. Nothing evil will happen to your people in Jesus' name. Everywhere we go, you are watching over us. Everywhere we are, you are watching over us. And I pray, Lord, we'll come back again. We'll sing in testimony, rejoicing in our lives in Jesus' name. All the needs of your children are met. Those who need to get married, we'll rejoice with them. Those who need children, we're going to celebrate with them. Those who need jobs, we're going to share their testimonies with them. And those who are sick, oh Lord, we know they are healed already in Jesus' name. Nothing will take a minute, a week, a month out of our lives. Every one of your children will live all their days out in Jesus' name. Lord, like an umbrella, let your promises be upon your people. Everywhere we go, we just know that our Father is watching over us. We're carrying those words much more, much more, much more. Everywhere we go in Jesus' name. Whatever good things, uh, people who do not know you, whatever they have, ours will be much more. Whatever peace they have, ours will be much more. Whatever prosperity they have, ours will be much more. Whatever children they have, ours will be much more. Whatever success they have, ours will be much more. We pray, Lord, your people will rest their heart now. There's no worry. Take care of your people, Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
from today i have much more from today from today i experience from today i will enjoy much more